known universally just simply as the BEM. It's uh, probably the last frontier of brim fishing in Australia. With uh, you could say it's just as good as it was 50 years ago. Well, I think it probably is for those that persevere and uh, adjust to the conditions, Rex. It is a a changing scene and Tuesday uh, the lake was opened and it had another metre and a half of water on it so uh, we're, in that short space of time we're seeing an incredible change. It's quite an amazing thing too with seeing all these flats with the weed, the, the diversity of wildlife that must be sustained from shrimps to prawns to ghost crabs to pelicans. I saw a crane up there diving for some small mullet, it's, it's an amazing food chain. With all this exposed area here, it's easy pickings for almost any wading bird, to, and particularly the swans and the, uh, and the pelicans, they're just having a great time. So I just hope we can have a great time too. Well, exclusive to Bem River is the polling effect, and it's known all over the world, Donnie, and away you go. Sure is, Rex. This is, uh, was proven to be the uh, ultimate, I guess, uh, with a mud bottom. The old timers uh, worked it out that uh, there was only one way and that was a pole. Anything else is uh, very much inferior. You'd put it in, secure him. I don't put him in too far because I've got to get him out. And then I'm going to uh, just tie off the top a couple of times around because that helps uh, the uh, rope not slipping up and down on the pole. Uh, the old timers worked it out that uh, there was nothing better than a pole in this mud. Anchors don't work anywhere near as well as uh, the mud. Look, the end of the rod just went down like that and he grabbed it. Don, well what? done. <laughs> I don't think he's anything to write home about. I think he's one of the small ones that inhabit this area. But that was with sandworm. Don's finding that apparently with the harder baits, like prawn and these other sort of fish type baits, that these smaller fish... This is not that small, but he certainly uh, he wouldn't make the legal size limit of 26 centimetres. So a nice looking Bem River brim. And what I'm going to do is just cut the hook off and just leave it. So many people just go after that hook. And we've said so many times before that those hooks cost a couple of cents and you've got a beautiful fish like a brim that can give someone ooh, a tremendous amount of enjoyment. Now. This might be a bit better fish, this fish. Well done, Rick. This might be a bit better fish. This still water fishing is really conducive to these soft rods. But there's a very good example of a beautiful Bem River brim. And you can see there that we're fishing in very, very heavy weed. Now that is a great example of a beautiful brim. I can tell you now, I didn't come down here to kill any, although we might grab one later on for tea and Di can cook it up. But is there a better sight than that? I haven't been here for over a decade. I come out with the Guru Donny, and within two minutes, I've got two beautiful examples of why I used to come to the BEM. Good on you, mate. And away he goes. You've got a fish on oh, there now, no. mate, so you better look at him, oh, he's on. Oh, he's he, on. Was he sure he's on? To your right, he's on. If you pill that up, oh, mate, I, I will guarantee that I he's on. I didn't hear the clutch run. <laughs> <laughs> there oh, he is. Mate, oh, he's mate. on, all right. I Holy told you he was on. Well done. <laughs> just important, those soft rods. Oh, so, so, I was just on. going to say, <laughs> I'm just going to say, yeah. so many people lose the fish just at the boat. Oh, look at that. <laughs> the big two right out, hook mate. and he pulled it out. Just fantastic. Oh, how about that? Back in 1931, when Zane Gray was at Bermagui during the log jam of the Naruma River, he actually left this rod in the memory of his particular spirit and he donated it to you, Don. How long have you had that? Oh, a long time. Mate, I tell you what. It's been a great rod. There's a photo there of the last Collingwood Premiership. <laughs> That's amazing. You're not wrong. <laughs> Sensational, mate. Well done. Oh, gee, I love it. Oh, yeah, gee. Could you believe that fish getting off? <laughs> In you come. Oh, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Going through some hooks here, but it doesn't matter because these fish will get rid of the hooks. There's no doubt about it. There you go. Now, 
Just picked up a couple of things by coming out here with Donnie. We're in a weed bed. So sometimes you can actually cast and it can land in just a big compost heap under the water and can sit there, nothing happens. So as soon as you cast it, it might land into a sandy area with shell and that's the home of brim. So if you're casting somewhere and you're getting fish consistently, particularly good fish, make sure you cast back in that area. And people say, oh, how would you know? It just all looks like the one bit of water. You can judge how, how far you're casting, and when you cast, feather the line. That means just stop the line with the finger, and you'll go in the same area every time. Okay, look, I'm uh, shelling the prawn. Uh, people ask me about that. And I say, look, uh, when I eat prawn, I shell them. And uh, I love brim, and I love to catch a brim, and I don't expect them to eat a, a prawn, shell and all. I perhaps am a bit biased where you think it works and uh, it's only in your mind. And I think that's a pretty good bait. I've left my hook clear. Not working yet, but uh, it's about to. Oh. oh, beautiful. If he does that again, we might have this bloke. Come on, mate. No, he's not there. Gee whiz, what a frustrating thing. Yes, he is, he's there. He and is. And a nice fish, too. Oh, he's a good one, isn't he? I'll tell you what. He's a good fish. I like the feel of this one. You like it, don't you? Oh, 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 oh. Wow, well, this could be a net one, this one. I tell you what, mate, you have put it on the nose of a serious fish. Let's hope you're right, Rex, by crikey. I reckon when you got 40 metres of line out when you did and you had to stop winding and he took line, mate, we're, we haven't got a kiss and release here, mate. <laughs> Fair enough. I tell you what. Still feels all right. He does feel quite good. He hasn't run again, but there he is. Can you see him? He's a nice one. Oh, wow. That is a beauty. That is a beauty. That is an absolute beauty. Look at that. Now, that's what we needed. Big lips. Yes. Crunching he's... teeth for the shell. Dead right. And he's got that bait right down. Yeah, now isn't that just a marvellous example of what Bem River's all about? Well, that's sensational. Just give us a look at the line there, Donny. And he swallowed that hook, so we'll do the right thing Thank and you, you can pop him back. I know well, a lovely, a lovely fish, Rex. Isn't I'm that just sensational? A good uh, result for the move. Yep. And that's what it's all about, folks. Fishing with people in the know who've been here for decades and know when to move and where to go. And it's been a valuable lesson for me today and I hope you've got something out of it too. Now, the Bem River is a serious fishery. I first came here in 1967, and that's a long time ago, and the last time, 1991. So it's been a while since I've been here. The pub got burnt down and they built it up again. There's a new jetty. But the ecology of the whole area is still in magnificent condition, showing the value of bag limits and regulatory fishing since the netters went out of here in the mid-1930s. A beautiful lunch prepared by Di Cunningham, a little bit of a kip and a cup of coffee, and late afternoon sees us in search of another species, the estuary perch of Bem River. Well, give it a go, folks. I hope you're enjoying the show because this is just paradise if you're a fisher like me. Wow, that was good feeling, I tell you. Was that on the Tassie Devil? Yes, 
the pink wow. Tassie Devil, weed and all. Have a look at that. Look at that. Well, that's a <laughs> terrific effort. I tell you what, I've never seen so much weed, but perseverance. Wow. Let's not lose that right over the side. What a beautiful fish. Wow. He's got a bit of toe this guy, too. Slam that, didn't he? Bit of displacement. Look at that. Down in the lip. Well, that's a beautiful perch. Now have a look at that. Wow. That is a very, very nice estuary perch. Come here, mate. Look at that with a comfort lift. Now. I'm shivering a bit, Rex, but uh, thank you for that. What a classic. Well, well, so you should be. Isn't it fantastic to see a bloke at your stage of life who actually gets excited about something like that? I'm shaking. Now, the eyes up here, they're for hunting. They live in the weed and they're mainly a predator type fish. And he's taken that particular pink Tassie devil. You can see these beautiful uh, dorsal fins and the pectoral fins and the anal fins. And one thing, if you're going to handle them, you want to handle them like I am now. They'll sit there all day. But here, real major problem if you're a young player. There's a spike there that can go right into you. And these particular areas here, these gill rakers, they can slice you to the bone. A beautiful example of this magnificent estuary perch. And that fish is not far off a kilo. Beautiful dark features, just camouflage superb. And mate, Donnie Cunningham's asked me if I'll release you. And away he goes. Well done, Rex. That was great. No, Don. I'm still shaking. That was great for the great man. Because I tell you what, we were just about pulling the pin here. We've been here for an hour. The swans are laughing at us. But perseverance once again. Sorry, Don. They're starting to come on. Right. We've got no, uh, no light at all. And I do make that apology, but I told Noel we've got to roll on it. So please, just no colour, but it is an important lesson. We've got the moon, which has just come up in the east. The sun's gone behind a cloud bank in the west. Prime times for fishing are first and last light, particularly when you do not get a lot of light. Now I haven't got an estuary perch on here. What I've got is I've got a tailor. Now these tailor have been in this system for a long, long time. Now you can see that because he is black. If he'd have been, sorry about that folks, if he had have been fresh out of the ocean, he would have been as silver as the hair on the side of my cranium. But the lesson is, don't give up until the last piece of light has gone from the sky. We can't film in it, but you people can certainly fish in it. Come out of there. Now, they call him Chopper Taylor because in there, he's got choppers. And he chops up everything, including those lures and white bait. But look, he's almost green, almost to a point of being, well, black. Because this estuarine system is a bracky system. It's been closed for many, many months, and they they actually adapt with the camouflage. I'll put you back in and just watch it, kids. Don't kiss too many tail because they've got teeth. Well, it's been another fantastic session. And the lesson is, never give up.